Wow. A lot of energy in this room, and the director actually saw the whole film with you. I started to miss the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, the first question, it's a simple one. What is your dance background? My dance background? Yes. I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance myself, really, yeah. I, uh, but uh, since, I, since I was little, you know, I am fond of doing all kind of visual art form kind of thing. You know, so in high school, I did, um, you know, I did drama. Uh, I direct uh, theatrical works. And so uh, I'm used to watching a lot of, you know, performance, all kind of performance, modern dance, you know, art shows. So, and including dance. Yeah, but maybe I would use a rather different um, point of view to see a dance show, uh, you know, from some you know ex more experience or you know dance show uh, viewers, but I have my own view when I see these all these kind of you know visual art performances, right? Okay. Um, what inspired you to make this film then? And tell us about the process of getting it made because I know it's a really right, hard yeah. and long journey. Right. It took it took it took us four years to make a movie, you know. I mean, the shooting days, we just shot for 23 shooting days, you know, but before we got enough investment to make the movie get started, uh, it took four years. And okay, the idea start, you know, day back from four years ago. Um, I and my producers, Safiu Chen, you know, at that time we didn't have an office. Yeah, but we have a company. So when we talked about our business, we, you know, we are like, um, we are like street dancers, you know, we talk on the street sometimes, you know, <laughs> after that, uh, we, we, we have a meeting in a restaurant and maybe if we get uh, uh, the restaurant closed, we just, you know, walk on the street, you know, sit on the bench on the street and talk. And later on, we find a good place to do that, which is in a university in Hong Kong called the Polytechnic University because I taught there in daytime. So at night, I and my, uh, my producer just went there and talked, and the security won't kick us out because, I'm a, <laughs> yeah, because I was a teacher there. So yeah, I, we, we just sit somewhere in the outside area. And then once we met some uh, dancers, they danced in front of the convenience store in the campus. Okay, there was a, in, a convenience store, 7-Eleven, in the campus, and then those we saw dancers dancing outside there. But uh, it's really interesting to me because according to my observation, they are not just, you know, the dance society. We, in Hong Kong, we call it danso. Yeah, dance society. <laughs> yeah, they are not just the dance society members because from the outlook, yeah, I, I can tell they are not. Some of them are not, yeah. And I found that actually some of them are from, you know, street dancers, you know, on the streets from different area in Hong Kong. So I was curious why you choose here to gather and dance. And then I found out there was a story behind, which was uh, uh, several years ago, you know, from that time, the dance society in school was suppressed by some high authority from, you know, borrowing some official rooms, like some mirror room to dance. So they just, you know, randomly find the place the area outside the convenience store to, to dance, maybe because it's easy for them to get drink, right? And, uh, you know, and also uh, in front of the convenience store, there are some glass wall, which they can see the reflection somehow, and which is yeah, good for you to do rehearsal of dance. So they just dance there, and gradually that place become famous, and even the street dancers like to go there. And also, you know, like for quite uh, some many years, even now the um, uh, overseas dancers would go there. You know, when they visit Hong Kong, they will want to visit there, no matter they want to dance there or not. They will want to visit there, you know, to take a look, yeah, or have a battle there. Mm -hmm. So that place become, you know, somehow uh, spot, you know, worldwide in the worldwide hip hop circle. 
And I think this case is really interesting to me. You know, it somehow shows the liveliness of Hong Kong people. Yeah. So I was like being called by these things, this incident to, you know, to make a movie on dance. Yeah. And so I did a lot of research and yeah, I and later on I, you know, implant the elements of Tai Chi in it. And actually, back at that time, four years ago, I thought it's that quite smooth because there was one big film company in Hong Kong uh, uh, was willing to you know, uh, start a movie and sign, even sign a contract with me. So I thought, wow, it's, it's quite okay. Yeah, it might be, you know, uh, it goes so smooth. But, and then, because that big company doesn't have enough investment by itself to make the whole film, so it has to collect more money. So, yeah, that's the, uh, the difficult story comes. Yeah, it take just, I thought, okay, three months is okay. I, I'm not, I, I don't need to be hurry up to make the movie, right? But, and then later it's half a year, but still they told me, uh, we don't have enough investment. And then it's one year and then two years. So, and I start to, you know, um, uh, encounter some negative comment on this whole project. Mostly they are like, uh, why I have to invest on a Hong Kong dance movie? How can you make a dance movie as good as, you know, those like Step Up, um, you know, street dance, you know, the American or British, you know, dance movie. So, just gradually, I thought the project is dead, you know. So I just put it down, and then during these four years, I and the producer developed some other story. But, and then it was until uh, 2011, uh, because of some uh, chance, we are asked to submit some project to the Golden Horse, like there's a film market event, it's called a film project, yeah. Uh, under the Golden Horse from the Taipei uh, Film Award event, to uh, that, that event uh, asked us to submit some film project, okay. Basically, th that kind of film market is some platform to match filmmakers and potential investors. And it was there, and then actually, okay, and I, we got accepted, the, the project got accepted, because it's not like everyone who submit a project, they will chose. Okay, but we, we are chosen, so I was so happy at that time. I don't know why I have a feeling that this is the first step to the, to the success of the movie, which was actually, when I look back upon it, it was quite innocent idea, because even though many projects who get submitted and then selected in that film market, most of them are not finally made into the movie. But at that point, I don't know when my project was chosen. I thought it was the first step of succeed, success. So uh, I spent so much time preparing the presentation material, and because I have waited for you know three years at that time, so I have many research material, like the video clips of different dancers, like the video on the audition that I made with, you know, Actually, we have met, I think, uh, close to 500 dancers in Hong Kong. So I have lots of this kind of uh, material to present to the potential investor. And I also draw the storyboard, you know, some postcard poster. So I, I, I paid lots of effort for the presentation in that film market event. And finally, I found the investor now, which is Winnie Zhang from uh, very important film uh, distribution company in Hong Kong called Golden Scene. So after she uh, wants to, she believe in us and you know, agree to invest on this project, then the following story is not so much difficult. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> talk, let's talk about the cast. Everyone okay. is just so, a Adorable. <laughs> and uh, you, you mentioned meeting 500 dancers. Right. What are these people's backgrounds? Are they actually dancers? Are they, do they have acting experience, professional, non-professionals? Most of them don't have any uh, acting experience. 
the main, the main uh, girl, she was a model at that time. Right now, she have been in maybe three or four movies, but before this movie, she has just a little role in a film. So this is the first uh, film that she take a leading role. And she really uh, uh, didn't have so much uh, acting experience. And she's also one of the you know, uh, people who came to our audition. And the Tai Chi boy, he is pretty exceptional. He is the most experienced actor in my movie. He is from, he's a graduate from the Academy of Performing Arts in Hong Kong. He studied uh, theater. Mm. So, yeah. But it is his first uh, performance in a feature film. So, not so many experience again. And the other dancers, they are just dancers. They don't, they don't act at all before that, yeah. I want to ask specifically about Tommy Guns, right. who's a Chinese Vietnamese American, right. who's from San Francisco. Right. I really enjoy the writing of this character because he has a very powerful and inspirational yeah. presence, but at the mm. same time, it's just not sentimental at all. Mm. Can you talk about how you found him and about the creation of this character? Okay, like the uh, confession part about his own story that you saw in the movie. <laughs> Uh, that was his basically his real story. Yeah. Uh, he's a physically challenged B boy from San Francisco. Now he's living in Tokyo. Um, actually, at the f until it, he, his character was not on my script until maybe the third or fourth draft of my, of my script. Because, you know, I, we took so much time, right, in the whole process, you know, of getting it started. So uh, we did lots of research. When we have time, I just do research. And I search on the web, you know, keep myself updated in the dance circle. And one day I saw uh, clips on YouTube about two uh, physically challenged b-boy battling. And I thought it was so cool. You know, it's so, it was such a big impact to me. I, I, I clearly remember that impression when I watched that battle video, you know, of two physically challenged people. And I think they are cool not because they're handicapped so that they can dance, you know, like they can have 80% of the performance of normal dances. But I really think they can dance their own style. Yeah, maybe more than that because they can use their claim so that they have a tools, okay? Yeah, sometimes they, are, they, they can use the crane to dance and sometimes they can just free threw the crew away and, and then dance on the floor and sometimes pick it up back and then dance again. I really think it's so amazing. So after watching it, I decided that I must include a role like this in my movie. Yeah, and I thought there would, no one would be more convincing than you know a guy with that one leg and who will still continue to dance to encourage fur yeah, who got injured, yeah. So I, and finally, I, on the, on the website, I found Tommy Guns, yeah, and I have so much email to him, you know, back and forth so many times to, conven to convince him to act in my movie because I don't know him personally at all, right? I don't know whether he, I don't even know whether he knows where Hong Kong is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, 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 I was, I, I studied in American before, you know, <laughs> some people, I, I met quite a lot of Americans who confuse about, you know, Hong Kong and Tokyo and Singapore and Taiwan. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so when I find Tommy Gans, I, I explain everything about what we are doing because it's not easy, you know, because it's not even easy to explain what we are doing to a Hong Kong film people in yeah in Hong Kong in the circle so it would I I would think it might be even more difficult to ask a dancers from you know America to act in a Hong Kong movie so I just tell him everything in email and finally maybe yeah he was I guess he was touched by our sincerity and he agreed to you know fly to Hong Kong to play the world that's great yeah. and um 
When this film was released in Hong Kong, the box office was very slow initially, mm. but word of mouth started to fly and the film critics were behind it and the mainstream industry was crazy about it. Yeah. And um, how did you build up that momentum? What was that process like from mm -hmm. nobody knew about it to now it's like a huge hit? Well, um, you know, through the whole process of making this film, I kind of uh, uh, find out this film has a character, has a characteristic in every step of the whole process of creating this film, including the process that we get uh, financed, uh, the process of you know shooting, the process of editing. Every step is not easy, but it will, you know, finally we will overcome it. So when this film is finished, okay, the, it was first premiered in Hong Kong this year in 31st of March. It was the world premiere, but in a film uh, festival in Hong Kong. We, after that, I believe that this film can go further, you know, although we don't have big star, but I can see how people like it. So I have a confidence to, to I, I just want to try my best and you know, together with the whole promotion team to, to promote the movie because I think, I believe it is a good one and I believe it has the potential to reach more audience, but it is really hard. On, at the same time, I think it is really hard. Like the trailers, I mean, I have so many, I edit the trailer by myself. Yeah, I have someone who edit the trailer. Some part is good, but as a whole, it's still not so um, satisfying because the, the point of the difficulty of promoting this movie is because it's a dance movie. And we knew that people has bias to a Chinese people making a dance movie. But this is the main point of the movie. So what should I do, right? Should I magnify it while we promote it or we try to, you know, you know uh, hide this thing? This is really hard for me to, uh, to, to, to make a judgment. Yeah, so we, 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 we did many versions and finally we make a version that most of us are satisfied. Yeah, and also we don't have star. So how should I make the trailer and how should I promote the movie? But finally, like in the trailer, I, sh I think I should be truthful to myself and I think I should be frank to the nature of this movie, which is we are all uh, new star in the movie. They are real dancers. They are real talented people hidden in Hong Kong. They're crouching tiger and hidden dragon. <laughs> and so I just, in the trailer, yeah, you, I, I, I really yeah, uh, recommend you to click on it on YouTube. And so I just, I finally decided to be truthful to this fact and I show them one by one like they are big stars and, you know, put their, <clears throat> like the credit, like the simple, how to say the, I try to simplify every profile of them and you know put it superimpose it on the screen while I show every one of them. So and um, like we don't have big budget in doing the promotion too, okay? We don't have a, we don't have an advertisement in front of the tunnel, you know, like big movie we have very huge board, you know, of the whole movie in front of the tunnel so that every one can see it. We don't have that budget for that big promotion. So we are figuring out everything that we can do without so much money. So we are like uh, making some banners, which is actually just some, just some paper, color paper, you know, with the slogan, how far in Chinese, how far uh, you are, how far can you go for, how far are you willing to go for blank, you know, in Chinese, uh, yeah, but in Chinese. So I have many sticker like this, uh, you know, put on the stick on the wall in the central area in Hong Kong. And for people to, you know, like doing graffiti to fill it up themselves 
you know, so it is like interactive promotion campaign, <laughs> which was so cool, I think. <laughs> yeah, of course, we did some of them by ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is true, but unexpectedly, yeah, unexpectedly, there are really so many people who really, you know, pick up their marker and do it themselves. And some of them even use these, you know, banners as a background to take very good, cool photo and post it on Instagram. So it become, gradually become a phenomenon, which was, you know, which was like one week. What I'm telling you is like one week before the release of the film. But actually, I'm still trembling, you know. I still don't have so much confidence. Yeah, but what I can do, I have, I have done everything. <laughs> so I, I have to, I don't know, I just, you know, uh, you know, and then the movie start. And um, okay, and also we do many, we try to post many uh, comment from the film critics, positive comment on Facebook. Yeah, and so I can see the, you know, the, the, it is growing, you know, the words of mouth it are growing gradually, although I'm still trembling. <laughs> yeah. So on the first day, you know, of the release of the movie, I'm telling people not to tell me the result of the box office. <laughs> yeah, really, not, it, it doesn't mean anything to me, no matter if it's good or bad. You know, if it is bad, I know. <laughs> it won't surprise me, as I tell you, every step of this movie is not easy, but it will be overcome. Yeah, but anyway, somehow uh, someone accidentally told me the box office, but it, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, how to say, I'm not challenged by that. So I just keep on doing everything I can, you know, posting things, good things on uh, Facebook, uh, you know. And also, one thing maybe uh, you might want to know is it is rather a, a pretty um, special things that we do in a film circle in Hong Kong which is called Jie Piu. Uh, we don't have an exact English translation. The closest one may be, we call it theatrical sharing, which is the filmmakers and the uh, actors would come to the cinema after, the, after every screening.